So this is an air quality sensor that I've put together and I'll show you how easy that is in this video. So you can see my little enclosure does have a, a black ring because I ran out of white filament uh, at the very end of this print. But uh, this is a very simple little project and I put this together because I do 3D printing and things like that and I was curious about the impact of 3D printing on the air inside of my home. And so this will help me keep track of that. So I've got a little dashboard set up here and it's got all the information that this sensor is gonna provide. And of course, this hooks back into Home Assistant and I can monitor it from anywhere. But I did want a little display that way when I'm in the room with a 3D printer, I can easily visually kind of find all the information that I need uh, to monitor indoor air quality. And so you'll see this sensor measures temperature, humidity. It's got a VOC index, so volatile organic compounds. It's also got a nitrous oxide index, which so far I have never really seen do anything because in a normal household environment, a NOx really isn't an issue, but it's on the sensor, so I put it on the screen. And then you'll see particulate measurements. So each one of these is a different size particle that this sensor is measuring. And so you've got uh, one micron, two and a half, four and 10 microns. And so you'll see these, it's very, very noisy as this system I believe uses a tiny little laser inside to measure the amount of particulate matter in the air. And so this will 1.7, if I remember the uh, scale correctly, means 1.7 micrograms per like cubic meter of air. And so it can just tell you again, how much particulate matter there is in the air. Now, if you look over here on this VOC index, you'll see that it jumps way, way up. And this was actually the highest reading I'd ever had out of this thing. And so to give you a sense of how sensitive this is, that is because I was trying to get this stain out of a shirt because I got a little bit of an ink stain on one of my uh, work shirts. And I was using rubbing alcohol to, uh, to get that stain out because that ink was uh, soluble in alcohol. So this thing in a different room down the hall with the door closed, uh, this thing, again, the, uh, the way the VOC works, it's very sensitive to alcohol. So that showed up and whenever I saw it, I was like, what the heck happened? And then I remembered, oh, that's, that's me cleaning a shirt with some alcohol. Other things on this index is you'll see the nitrous oxide reading 100. The way it does VOC and uh, nitrous oxide is it's calibrated to like a running average of like a 12 or a 24 hour window. And these indexes are relative to what's been typical over a preceding measurement window. So this one at 132 means the VOCs are still coming down whereas the uh, N saying 100. So that's the, uh, the NOx levels are nominal, meaning they haven't really changed. Now the particulate matter, those are actual weights, you know, per volume there. Um, and so I've just got it charting these out. So again, I can visually kind of reference what's all going on. Uh, features of this enclosure, it's uh, important to note that there are some mechanical criteria for how you mount the sensor. And so you, here you'll see the intake and the fan exhaust of the sensor and also a little USB port for the ESP32 that's inside. Uh, so it pulls in air and then blows it out here. This can be mounted on a wall, but if you do that, this should be facing down. If you orient this on the side, this vent should always be above this fan. Um, and so there are some technical notes on the sensor that's inside of this, and that's the way you want to use it. So I mentioned this is very, very simple. So we'll look inside at the Sincerion SEN55. I'm using an, another e-paper display. I probably wouldn't do that if I had to do this over again. That was a choice because I had this. I bought this display at the same time I bought the larger one uh, that I made the uh, dashboard with. And the simple fact is, is that I don't know that that's as useful in this type of setup because this sensor, you really do want it reading pretty much live. And this thing needs to be on pretty much the whole time to get good readings. And because of that, uh, it's no problem really to update the screen quite often. So I would probably use a regular LCD. And you might think, well, what if I wanna run this off a of battery? Eh, this sensor pulls like 100 milliamps at five volts. It needs five volt feed. So you're really not going to be running this thing off a of battery anyway. It draws a little too much power for that and it's a little too high voltage. 
So I'm going to plug this in 24-7, so the power use of using an LED or something really isn't that big of a deal. So one thing I almost forgot is I need to give a big shout out to Mr. M. Davidson on GitHub because uh, this WaveShare 4.2 inch screen actually didn't work um, originally because it's a very new revision. It's a Rev 2.2 of this screen. And in ESP Home, the WaveShare isn't set up to support this thing yet. And so when I first fired it up, I was super frustrated. I've actually been sitting on this video for like a couple of weeks because I couldn't get the display to work. I wasn't really sure what I was gonna do. So he has a pull request. He's been working on getting these newer versions of these screens working. And so this thing is using uh, that piece of software from him. So this is not just a pure regular ESP home. So this is using kind of his, you know, if you want to call it a beta version of the driver for this screen um, for ESP home, right? Uh, that That's pretty important to getting this thing working. Now, if you use a different screen, that's not going to be an issue, but I did just want to say, hey, uh, thank you to him for doing the work, really, that, that makes this screen work. And look, all your stuff in ESP Home, right? Somebody sat down and built that stuff so that it can be really easy for people like you and me to put these things together. So I did want to say a big thank you to him uh, for getting this thing up and running. Um, but that said, I've got the screen updating like every 15 minutes because these readings will not change dramatically in a 15 minute period. But now I can mount this on the wall. You can see I've got a little space where I can put a little nail or tiny screw in the wall and hang this thing right beside my 3D printer and keep constant watch on the air quality. I actually haven't found that 3D printing matters that much. Um, PLA doesn't really move it much at all. Um, I even tried ASA because ABS and ASA are supposed to be the big, you know, boogeyman 3D printing filaments. And I really didn't notice much. Um, my indoor air quality has never been really outside of the extremely healthy range, notwithstanding the little alcohol incident, because again, this thing is super sensitive to alcohol. The biggest impact is actually whenever I've been grilling outdoors of my house, I've seen a little bit of particulate matter, but still well below the threshold of even what's considered very healthy. So uh, this doesn't seem to be hugely necessary, but if you're looking to build one, maybe this could be a good project for you. It's not extremely cheap because this uh, sensor in here, this SEM55, it does cost, you know, 35, 40 bucks prior to shipping. I think I spent somewhere around $45 after shipping this thing from DigiKey. So it's not the cheapest project. And you can get air quality sensors on Amazon, but they won't just magically work with Home Assistant. So the advantage of doing this yourself is you can kind of customize your display and you can integrate this in your dashboard. You can monitor air quality um, with your Home Assistant server and potentially send out alarms and warnings and phone notifications with that system. So it does provide for a level of flexibility that you're not going to get with the cheap off-the-shelf Amazon units. And even when I call those cheap, they're still not much cheaper than just building this thing. So I've mentioned uh, earlier that this is a pretty simple little device to build. This thing is nothing more than that sensor, the display, and an ESP32 board. So we'll look quickly at that. All right, well, let's talk components. And once again, this is a very, very simple little device that we're going to be putting together. I'm going to be using another C Zhao ESP32 C3. Look, they're cheap, they're great, they work. For the display, I'm going to be using a 4.2 inch e paper display from WaveShare. Um, this one, I don't need a hat, it actually has all the, uh, the circuitry on the back. And then here is going to be the, the main workhorse of the entire thing. Uh, this is made by a company called Sincereon, and this is an SEN55. You can see right there, SEN55. Um, this will measure uh, temperature, but I think that's mostly just for calibration, uh, measures humidity, it will measure particulates, and it will give you four different categories of particulates where it measures them, I think, by a uh, gram per cubic meter of air. Um, and it also measures VOCs, volatile organic compounds, and it measures nitrous oxide levels. So this thing really is the entire air quality 
sensor system all in one package. Um, I'll also mention that Seed Studio makes a version of this where they use this uh, in one of their components. It costs maybe a little more, but I think it comes with all the cables and everything. And, um, you know, honestly, it's not a bad deal if you can find it in stock. This is just the raw sensor itself. So into the enclosure, this thing goes and I've got little cutouts. There are some application guides that Sincerion puts out for this thing. And it does mention like, you know, you've got to keep these things separate. You don't just want one big opening. Uh, you're actually supposed to seal off in between these things. And you're also supposed to seal this thing off from the rest of the, uh, the sensor housing. So that's why I've got a little bit of some walls here just to um, kind of keep it centered up on these outlets. And I'll probably put like a little bit of foam or something um, around this to try to keep air from passing in between. Also, whenever you mount it, um, you're supposed to either mount it flat. If you mount it vertically, you're always supposed to keep this port above the fan. Um, and so that that's just some things to keep in mind. You can orient so that the sensor faces down, but you're not supposed to orient it so that the sensor faces up. Um, and if you orient it like this, you are supposed to keep that opening up. So that is to keep like particles from getting like recycled or something um, into the, the system. Um, the other kind of weird thing is the connector that they use is not a standard like XH or PH or DuPont connector. And I had to go out and buy a whole new box of connectors just to get the one that I needed and these are compatible with the GH connectors. So JST GH connectors. Technically it's not a, a JST connector, it's some other company, but they are compatible. And so I, I just wired up a little header for it and it uses a six wire connector. It only actually uses five wires out of it, but uh, you do need a six position, uh, again, GH connector for that thing. And so, you know, it, it's a decent connector, you know, it's little and it's got a little lock, you know, uh, so, you know, I don't really have complaints about the connector physically. It's just that they're not really common. Let's get this thing back out. Um, they're not really common. And so I had to go buy a whole new thing of connectors to, uh, to get this one. So with that, um, let's get this thing wired up and get it all programmed. All right, so here we are in the YAML code in ESP Home. So the first thing I wanna draw your attention to is this external component. And so as I had mentioned earlier, this WaveShare 4.2 inch, the newest version of that e-paper display doesn't just work right away. And so this is what you need to pull in the new, like I said, kind of a beta driver to uh, to run that screen. So this is where that enters the code. Other than that, all the setup is pretty much the same. Um, you'll see that I do have this set up to an ESP32 C3 because that is the specific board that I'm using. So down below, pretty much straightforward stuff. I've got time pulling in from Home Assistant. I've got display refresh and system restart buttons that I can also access in Home Assistant. I've got I2C set up for the sensor and SPI set up for the display. And for the sensor itself, there is already a Sincerion SEN 5X component. So there are multiple versions of this sensor. And so there's like a SEN 54 and a 55 and some others. And they all have different specific specifications for each sensor. So some of them may just have particulate matter. Mine has nitrous oxide, whereas some won't. And so that's the difference, but they all use the same platform. So within that, we've got some specifications, uh, what we wanna name each individual sensor output. So I've got all that set up on this component. Now for the VOC and NOx, there are a lot of parameters for the algorithm that you can change. And Sincerion does have some technical bulletins on uh, setting this stuff up. So you'll see here, I'm on the technical downloads page for this sensor. And so that is something I would look through. I would look through all these just to make sure there's nothing you're unaware of with how this sensor works, because there's a lot of stuff integrated all at once, but it's got all kinds of application notes on these things. If you want to tweak anything, feel free. That said, I've left everything pretty much default. So I've got rolling 12 hour windows where it's setting everything up. And again, I haven't changed any other setting. So you can also do a little bit of calibration here on the temperature readings if they're a little off. Now below that, I've just got stuff set up for fonts that I'm gonna be using on the display, as well as some icons that I'm using for 
symbols on the screen just to uh, kind of give some visual indicators of what the sensors are. I've also got a bunch of graphs set up. So if you're curious about any of this, I would refer you to the previous video. I built a wave share display dashboard. And so that video kind of goes through all the different options you can have for displays. But otherwise, this is just a bunch of regular old display graphs being set up here. One for every sensor that I want to display a graph for on the screen. And then lastly, we've got the display setup. Again, nothing fancy here. Since I'm using that outside component, this will just work as normal because that gentleman has built this to just work. So everything else here is pretty much standard for a WaveShare e-paper display. I'm updating every 15 minutes, and then I've got all the displays set up. And again, you can modify this as you wish to set up your display. And so that's it. That's the whole build. It is very straightforward and very simple. This is something that, um, you know, one of the most straightforward assemblies there is, because again, you just make sure that all the wires are hooked up correctly, and then it's just programming. There's only a few components here. So with that, I will wrap this up. As always, would love to hear any feedback or comments anybody has on anything else that you think this could be useful for. Um, otherwise, as always, I appreciate your time. Thanks.